Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly Stevens. I'm a teacher and author, and this is English Nerd. So if you've been around the channel for any length of time at all, you know that I am obsessed with Shakespeare's Hamlet. I've taught it for over 10 years. I recently wrote a retelling from Laertes perspective. It's a dark academia, 1920s take on it. But today I wanted to talk about five ways to teach Hamlet because I've had some questions um, about how, how, what are some of the best ways to do that. So I want to offer five to you today. Number one, I feel like everybody should do this if they're teaching Hamlet, especially to high school, which is the grade or the level that I teach, read the play aloud in parts. My very first year, I sent students home with an act or a scene of reading, and it was confusing and difficult for them and not that entertaining. So I found that as soon as we started reading in class, then they got a sense of who the characters were and what was going on, and I could pause if they weren't getting something or explain what was going on or give a definition of a word. And so I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you read it aloud in parts. On top of all those benefits, it's just genuinely so fun to do. So uh, do it. I mean, read the play aloud in parts. Um, number two is to watch Hamlet productions, Hamlet movies, Hamlet plays, something so that they can see not only who tends to say what, because they've been reading it aloud amongst themselves in class, but also what a really good performance of those lines sounds like, what the blocking sounds like, how the characters interact with each other when they're not speaking or even while they are. I love showing different versions of Hamlet to my classes so that they can compare and contrast the different performances and even the cinematography, things like the lighting and the set and the costumes and all those things. Are they conducive to the spirit of the original play? Do they actually match up with some of the words or do they diverge too far? And that's not a question of modern versus older performances either. Those can just be the quality of whatever performance it is. So. I would definitely recommend that you do that as well. Number three is to host a debate. Once you get about halfway through the play, maybe a little bit more, then people are going to start forming opinions about things like, is Hamlet insane? Was the ghost real? The the nature of revenge versus justice, you know, whatever whatever it is that you're focusing on in your particular class. But I think that's a great way to go. I would recommend that you that you um, have students bring in evidence for whatever their side is so that they're prepared. They're not just talking off the top of their head or what they vaguely remember talking about in class, but they really are rooted in the words of Shakespeare. So yeah, host a debate, see who has the stronger argument, not just the most charisma, but the actual most textual evidence and critical thinking to back up their ideas. Um, number four is recitations. There is something about memorizing and getting into your psyche the words of Shakespeare. And so every year I have my students recite a, you know, a portion of a soliloquy or something that's equivalently long. So about 20 lines or so, you can do whatever you like. You can have students choose their own recitation or, or perform a scene or something that's, that's great. But I think that that is... Awesome. Now, of course, recitation day is always a mixed bag. There are people who have prepared really well and there are those who have not. But what I love is when a student who just has been kind of floating in the, in the middle of the pack the whole year really shines through and embraces the challenge of this assignment and brings their own just honest emotion to it. I've had a few a few times when I just want to break out into applause, but I have to I have to keep my teacher persona on and say some some generally nice things, but you know, I can't applaud one student and then, you know, not applaud somebody else. I feel like that's maybe maybe bad form. But yeah, recitations that is great. I also have students ask each other what different parts of the recitation um, mean. So instead of having their own 
recitation in front of them so they're reviewing the whole time and not paying attention I have them put all that away the the ones who are listening that is and instead write down a question for the person who's presenting so maybe the person who's presenting is giving the to be or not to be speech and there's the line that says who would fartles bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life a student might ask what does fartles mean what was the definition of that word and part of the grade the last little you know the difference between a b and an a is knowing the answers to those types of questions not trick questions but what does this mean type questions so there's that um, finally number five is to incorporate some paired readings hamlet has had not only a huge influence on everything that came after, but it was also inspired by many things that came before. So you have uh, different readings from the Bible. I mean, that that Hamlet quotes some of those, you know, to varying degrees of, of faithfulness. T.S. Eliot writes about Hamlet in The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. Um, Hamlet mentions Nero and Hercules and some of these some of these um, ancient figures, historical or fictional. And it's cool to compare and see what is Shakespeare, what is Hamlet in the story doing with this comparison that he's making or what source material is this from. So if that appeals to you, then I would definitely recommend the Hamlet Reader. It just came out, so this is a proof copy, that's why it has this ugly stripe across it. But it includes a completely blank version of Hamlet, so if you're teaching your students, then they can, um, you know, take notes very easily. There are no footnotes, it's, it's you know, totally up to you. But it also includes a ton of paired readings, not only those, those that I mentioned, in fact those are in there, but there are sonnets, there are really famous essays about Hamlet, like from Samuel Taylor Coleridge, for example. There um, are some female perspectives as well, which sometimes get lost in the mix. And um, I also included, because yes, I'm the editor, <laughs> because yes, I'm obsessed with Hamlet. I also included um, a selection of movie versions and some further reading as well. So if you are interested in this, it is available on Amazon. If you're not interested in this, but you like the idea of teaching Hamlet or you have to teach Hamlet, then you can also go to my website, carly-stevens.com, and there are 15 ways to teach Hamlet on there. So I gave you five, but there are 10 more. You can check those all out on my website. I'll include the links for that and the Hamlet reader down below. I hope this was helpful. Teaching Hamlet is my favorite part of the school year, and it can be yours as well. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. I love talking about Hamlet, teaching Hamlet, performing Hamlet, um, all of that good stuff. So with that, like this video if you like it. Do not forget to subscribe for more English nerdy goodness. Get the notifications, and I'll see you next time.